Chandler, what are you doing? Chandler? Oh, my God. <laughs> You're smoking again? Well, actually, yesterday I was smoking again. Today I'm, I'm smoking still. Is it possible that people with addictions, either drug addiction, alcohol addiction, maybe even sexual addictions, anything like that, is it possible that a person with an addiction, with some sort of stronghold, is it possible for that person to be saved, to go to heaven, even while they're struggling with that addiction? The death of Matthew Perry, the one who's known for being on the sitcom Friends, because of his death, people are wondering this even more now. This was a question that was asked previously, and so even now this happening helps to kind of highlight this. And the question is, one, do we know what his relationship was like with Christ? But also, those who profess to have a relationship with Christ, and if they're struggling, can that person also be saved? For the first time in my life, I knelt down and prayed. And that prayer was, please, God, make me famous. You can do anything you want to me. Just make me famous. Now, that's Matthew Perry speaking about a prayer that he had some time ago uh, in his early 20s, just about making it big. He's in, he's in Hollywood, and he wants to become someone, as most people in Hollywood do want to become someone famous, an actor. Uh, the problem is, though, the prayer that he's asking isn't quite the prayer that God wants you to pray, although God can work with it. But the Bible tells us uh, the one, and this is for the, those of us who don't happen to be looking to become a, a superstar or anything like that, but he says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added to you. Well, all what things? That I can go ahead and pray to be famous and so forth? No, 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 no. Uh, now, keep in mind that this is a person that's praying this prayer that's also having some struggles, and some more struggles are going to come, but whoever it is, whether you whether you're this person, whatever it is in life, and even if you still have a struggle, remember this also in Proverbs, I'm sorry, Psalms 37, 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the, the desires of your heart. So whatever your desires are, if you first delight yourself in him, well, then he will change your heart. But what if you're still struggling? Three weeks later, I got friends, and God did not forget about the second part. <laughs> I mean, I, I had the American dream happen to me. I got the great job. I was good at it. I, had a, I bought a house. I, the house had a pool. Uh, and I really, really liked it. Loved it for about six months. And then I walked in my house and went, oh, man, this is not fixing this problem that I have. Now, for him, therein lies a problem, but it also is something that a lot of people deal with, not just alcoholism, but alcoholism, also some other sort of drug addiction. What about some sort of sexual addiction or porn? Any sort of addiction we can kind of all put in the same category, especially if this addiction is a sinful addiction. Well, what does the Bible say? The Bible says in Galatians 5, specifically in 21, it says, Indian drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, just as I forewarned you, uh, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So what if someone is practicing those things? Someone is constantly doing those things. Uh, can that person, can a drunkard, can someone who is under some sort of compulsion, some sort of addiction, can that person be saved? Well, it looks like this passage says that they cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Well, there might be something to, to look at so we can kind of drill a little bit deeper. The Bible also says in 1 John 3, 9, it says that no one who is born of God practices sin because his seed abides in him and he cannot sin because he's born of God. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. So the question is, does that include the person who is struggling with the sin? Well, there's something in that that we ought to see. Let's go back to verse 9. No one who is born of God practices sin. Well, think about yourself. Do you sin? Does anyone that you know that is born of God, do they happen to sin? Well, sure, that's all of us. As a matter of fact, he already told us in chapter 1, 8, that anyone who says he does not sin or has a problem with sin, that person is lying. Well, we all do. And, we, and when we do sin, we do have an advocate. We have an advocate that pleads for us on behalf of our sin. But realistically speaking, all of us who are who name the name of Christ, we do sin, we will sin. Now, not as much, hopefully. And the issue is this practicing sin. And the word that's used for practicing sin is the word poie, so it's the word that's doing the sin, that's constantly doing the sin. But what about a person who's struggling with a drug addiction, someone or alcohol addiction, just like Matthew Perry? Yeah, I was drinking, at that time, I was drinking out with friends a, a lot. 
And then at 1.45, I would say, I'm going to go home and I'd race across town to a liquor store, buy a bottle of vodka and drink as much as I had with the other guys that night. And uh, then deep into addiction, there was a more, much more real prayer, you know, to save my life, you know, and that was answered as well. Now, he's got a, he's had a serious addiction. He's so much so that he's willing to do whatever it takes to get alcohol. Some folks, you know, that are willing to do whatever it takes to get this drug, whatever this fix is. And I don't know if he's ever made a profession of faith. He gives, he's given a, a kind of a generic testimony of him praying to God for God to save his life. Well, uh, in terms of him saving him uh, the way that I think maybe he was hoping, well, that didn't happen. He lost his life and all the details aren't out. Presumably the reports are that it may have, may have been addiction related. We don't know. But here's the issue is, and again, I don't know what his life is like, what his prayer life was like, what his walk with Christ was like. If he had one, who this, who, which, which God was he praying to? We don't know. Was this just some, some something that was just kind of superficial, but nothing really um, personal, n- nothing that was actually uh, heartfelt and serious that he really placed his faith in Christ, what Christ did? Don't know. However, what I do know is I know of plenty of people who have struggled with an addiction, who have placed their faith in Christ. Ultimately, that addiction ends up going away. As a matter of fact, I can point to my mother. Same thing with her. And so it's possible. But now what about a person who has placed their faith in Christ and still struggles with it? Well, going back to the passage, the Bible says that anyone that's practicing sin or someone that's doing or has a particular addiction, going back to uh, Galatians 5.21, notice what it says. He says, uh, in drunkenness, and of course, this whole thing, can it's not just being drunk. Obviously, someone with any other sort of addiction will, will follow in this. But he says that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. Well, does that mean, again, the person that struggles with that, can they not go? Well, there's something that you need to figure out that we need to see. Paul talks about his struggle. Well, and we don't know specifically what the struggle is. Possibly, probably uh, something having to do with pride, uh, him boasting. And so what does he do? He kind of changes it around. So what will he boast in rather than himself? Uh, and his knowledge and so forth. He'll boast in the Lord, boast in his weaknesses. We don't know what it is, but Paul says, Paul tells us the things that he struggles with. He says in chapter seven, verse 18, he says, for I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh for the willing is present in me, but the doing of good is not for the good that I want. I do not do, but I practice the very thing or the very evil that I do not want. But if I am the one doing the very thing that I do not want, I am, I am no longer the one doing it, but the sin which dwells in me. So are we to take from this that Paul possibly won't see the kingdom of heaven because he states himself that he practices sin? That's literally the word that's used here. Well, no. And this is the hope that we can find for Paul, for ourselves, for the addict. Notice what he says. He says, for I know that nothing good dwells in me. That is in my flesh for the willing and the word that's used for willing is the word thalane, which is comes from the Greek word thalo, which is to desire the desire. My honest, heartfelt desire is there to desire for what to do good, not to do bad. He says that is present in me, but the doing uh, of the good is not. Then he says for the good that I want, uh, I do not do. And said same word, poil, which is what we saw in first John three. So this so the good that I want to do, I don't do, but the evil I, I don't want to do, I keep doing. He says, but I practice the very f- evil that I do not want to do. Well, the point is, what do you desire? And so if a person who is an addict struggling, do they want to be that? Has to, Because if a person desires to be changed, uh, then that's ind- indicative of the desire of their heart being changed, the Lord working in them. If your desire is to not be an alcoholic, if your desire is not to struggle with the drugs, struggle with porn, struggle with sexual addiction, struggle with alcohol, whatever it is, if that's not your desire. Now, if your desire is, I want to get this, I want to, I want to drink, I want to whatever it is and still be safe. Well, that's the person that's practicing sin. That's the person that's practicing drunkenness. That's the person that's practicing evil. That's the person that practiced that. If the desire is different, that person is struggling. He has a stronghold, but he's not desiring to be that way. In other words, he didn't want to be a drunk Christian. He didn't want to be a homosexual Christian. 
He didn't want to be a lustful Christian. He didn't want to be some sort of addicted Christian to anything else. If you, and of course, ultimately, the main addiction that leads people to hell, uh, as a matter of fact, this is kind of what, <laughs> if you want to break down what you would even see in a person's desire to not be saved uh, or to live how they want to, the greatest addiction is the, the the addiction of me, me serving myself, me doing what I want to do. Now, Matthew Perry spoke about him wanting to be famous and so forth. Well, that sort of addiction, that sort of desire is a desire for yourself. But if your desire is for him, then you'll be saved. If your desire is for you and then him second, if your desire is for him to take away these things, the bad stuff so I can live a better me and then still him second, you cannot be safe. The desire has to be him first and foremost. And then there'll be some struggles, obviously. And then sometimes he even leaves those struggles a little bit longer than we would like to. Why? Because maybe there's someone there that's looking at me and my struggles that I can help. Or I can look at someone else who's also gone through these struggles and they can help me. But if a person desires to be delivered, that person will be delivered. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us, Paul tells us that there's no temptation that you that's overtaking you, but such as is common to man. So all of these temptations, all the things we go through, everybody goes through them. And look what it says. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to bear. So he's not going to put anything more than you can actually deal with. And he says, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also so that you will be able to endure it. Endure what you're going through, making it through it. Ultimately, you'll come out of it. Now, how is it going to work out? I don't know. But a person who struggles... Obviously, God is cognizant that people are going to struggle even as being believers. But that person that's desiring to be closer to him, then he will clean you along the way. He'll bring you out. But that's if you're desiring him. That's why it says delight yourself in the Lord. Then he'll give you the desires of your heart. Uh, the desires of your heart don't take place or don't take precedent before seeking him. And that may have been the issue with Matthew Perry. Uh, I hope not. I pray that he did have a relationship with Christ. I don't know. I can't find any videos saying so, but that doesn't mean that they don't exist. That doesn't mean that it's not true. So I hope so. But for anyone else uh, who's struggling, you can take comfort that God is a God who delivers. Amen. Goodbye, Mr. Heckles.